This Day in Sports History with your host, Nick O'Dwyer, back at you for another episode. If you all enjoy this video, leave a like down on it, comment to the video, and subscribe to the channel if you want more of this content, or if you want content surrounding all major sports, subscribe to the channel. Without further ado, let's get into it, This Day in Sports History. First, we start off in 1862, where the first baseball enclosure opens at Union Rounds in Brooklyn. Now, this was different because baseball before that, it really started in 1859. But baseball before that wasn't a fully enclosed sport. So, they didn't really have all the fences going everywhere. This time, the first fully enclosed baseball game. Therefore, the tenant of the land was allowed to charge for admission since it was a fully enclosed park. Moving up to 1912, we have Ty Cobb. And if you know Ty Cobb, you know he was famous for two things, giving people a lot of hell and his excellent baseball ability. So which one are we going to talk about on this one? Is it the excellent baseball ability? No! It's his ability to heckle the hell out of people. In 1912, the Detroit Tigers were playing the New York Islanders, and the year previous, a New York Islanders fan was heckling Ty Cobb. Cobb was heckling back, but never actually did anything about it other than talking. This season, though, was a little bit different. Apparently, the heckler had lost some fingers. He had lost three fingers, so he didn't have two full hands, but he was heckling Ty Cobb. I'm not going to say what he actually said. He called him a half-racist term. I'm pretty sure you guys can see where this is going. And Ty Cobb, maybe he was about to do something. Maybe he wasn't. We don't know. Because sometimes reputations become more of a myth than what the actual human was. And Ty Cobb's reputation, his myth has grown so big. So maybe Cobb was actually about to do something. We don't know. But what we do know is he definitely did something after teammate Sam Crawford went to him and said, Are you going to take that? So once Crawford said that, it turned out, no, no, he is not going to take that. Cobb went up into the stands, started beating the heckler down, and a fan at one point said, no, stop, he has no hands. And Cobb replied back, honestly, pretty funny. I don't care if he has no feet. Again, honestly, pretty funny. It depends on how you looked at the whole situation. I find it amusing. It may not be to you. I don't know. But then what happened, Ty Cobb was indefinitely suspended after the incident and his teammates, his Detroit Tiger teammates, refused to take the field until Ty Cobb was reinstated for what he had done. And now Ty Cobb wasn't the greatest teammate in the world. In fact, there's a lot of rumor, another maybe myth, that a lot of his teammates didn't like him for everything he was doing. But his teammates supported him on this one. They refused to play unless Ty Cobb was reinstated. Three days later, Ty Cobb actually took the field attempting to play, and the umpires made him get off the field, and the rest of his teammates walked off with him. The Tigers, planning for this kind of thing, had replacement players ready. They ended up losing the game 24-2 on the game three days later, and then Ty Cobb was talking to his teammates, talked to him about, no, don't take this one from me. Get back on the field. So his teammates eventually got back on the field. Cobb then served a 10-day suspension before he was able to come back. Moving up six years, we have the guy we talked about a lot on yesterday's edition. Walter Johnson, in 1918, threw a shutout for the Washington Senators against the Chicago White Sox in 18 innings. Walter Johnson, 18 innings pitched, 10 hits allowed, 1 walk, 9 strikeouts. And if that's not impressive enough, the counterpart, Lefty Williams, pitcher for the White Sox, 17 in the third inning, 8 hits, 1 run allowed, 2 walks, 3 strikeouts. Obviously the 1 run was the game winning run in the 18th inning. But 18 innings, definitely not something you would see today. Then, in 1920, the soccer team ADO20 forms in Heemster. In 1941, this is what the article is written about today because as you'll see throughout the rest of the video, there wasn't really a whole lot of big events that happened in the day. In 1941, Joe DiMaggio started his 56th game hitting streak in a Yankees 13-1 loss. But at the end of the day, DiMaggio started what would be one of the most impressive streaks of all time. Any major sport, it doesn't matter. Joe DiMaggio started his 56th game hidden streak. And over the course of that 56th game hidden streak, DiMaggio batted 408. The Yankees at the time were 14 and 15. And then once the streak started, they went 41, 13, and 2. 
on their way to the AL pennant and the World Series championship, in a big part to Joe DiMaggio and that hidden streak. In 1944, the Cincinnati Reds pitcher Clyde Schoon no hits the Boston Braves one to nothing. Now, the impressive part here: nine innings pitched, one walk, one strikeout for Schoon. But the Braves pitcher Jim Tobin, eight innings pitched, five hits allowed, one run, two strikeouts. But Tobin was the one who drew the walk, so Schoon couldn't get the perfect game. In 1948, at the 73rd Preakness States, Eddie Arcaro wins aboard Citation in the second leg of the successful Triple Crown attempt. Sticking with 1948, Donald Bradman scores 187 runs as Australia defeats Essex. And Australia, they compiled a world record 721 runs on that day. Bradman is acknowledged as the greatest batsman in the history of Test cricket with a 99 0.94 percentage and is looked upon as one of the greatest numbers in all of sports history every single sport around the world it's just amazing honestly and tomorrow he will be on this list for doing something even greater than this then going back to horse racing in 1952 johnny Longden becomes the second jockey ever to accumulate 4,000 wins in his career in 1953 in his first world title defense Rocky Marciano knocks out Jersey Joe Walcott in the first round to retain his championship in his first title defense. Then in 1959, we have the 100th anniversary of the first collegiate baseball game ever played between Amherst and Williams College. The teams reenacted the original game under the original rules, and under the original rules, Amherst pretty much destroyed Williams in the original matchup. Moving into 1963, Tottenham Hotspur of England wins the third European Cup Winners' Cup against Atletico Madrid of Spain 5-1 at Rotterdam. Then the next year, 1964, Sporting of Portugal wins the fourth European Cup Winners' Cup against MTK Budapest of Hungary 1-0 at Antwerp. In 1970, with everything that was going on with South Africa at the time, with apartheid, just everything happening, the International Olympic Committee, the IOC, voted to expel South Africa from those Olympics. Then in 1973, Nolan Ryan, the California Angels pitcher, tosses his second no-hitter to defeat the Kansas City Royals 3-0. In the game, Ryan, known for his strikeouts, as much for his walks, 9 innings pitched, 4 walks allowed, 17 strikeouts in the game. In 1985, Everton of England wins the 25th European Cup Winners' Cup against Rapid Wine of Austria 3-1. Then in 1991, Manchester United wins the 31st European Cup Winners' Cup against Barcelona 2-1. In 1991, we have a historic day in baseball, not because any big records happen, but U.S. President George H.W. Bush takes Queen Elizabeth to the Oakland Athletics Baltimore Orioles game in Memorial Stadium, which the Orioles happen to lose 6-3. Then in 1994, we have the LPGA Championship Women's Golf at DuPont Country Club, and Laura Davies of England wins her second major title, three strokes ahead of runner-up Alice Ritzman. Going to 2002, the 10th UEFA Champions League final took place and Real Madrid defeated Bayer Leverkusen 2-1 in Glasgow. Now in 2010, and probably the most impressive thing to me, just hearing it is insane to think about, 16-year-old Jessica Watson becomes the youngest person to sail solo, non-stop, and unassisted around the world. Just think about that. 16 years old, you're sailing unassisted, non-stop around the world props to you that that that's amazing but that's not the only thing to happen on this day in 2010 in the fa cup final you have chelsea versus portsmouth chelsea ends up winning one to nothing in wembley stadium then at the 2011 pga players championship south korean kj Choi defeats david toms on the first hole of sudden death to win 1.71 million dollar purse then finally, at the 2016 PGA Players Championship, the number one player in the world at the time, Jason Day, wins by four strokes ahead of runner-up Kevin Chappell. So that's what happened in this day in history. I already told you what I thought was the most impressive. I think Jessica Watson doing what she was able to do at age 16 is by far the most impressive of everything that happened on this day in sports history. 
Let me know what you guys thought was the most interesting. Was it that? Was it something else? Let me know. For Nick O'Dwyer and the 10th inning, stay safe, everyone. See ya.